All right, we are we're on, and uh, welcome everyone. I'm Jill, and uh, happy to be with you sharing practice. And uh, yeah, that's enough. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Tonight, um, uh, the talk and the practice is inspired by a quote um, by Matthew Ricard, who um, I'll put the quote down below in the YouTube recording. It's uh, he, if you don't uh, know, it, um, he was a, had a PhD in molecular genetics from Pasteur Institute in France, I believe it is. He's French or, uh, by birth. And um, now he lives in a monastery in Nepal uh, for many years. Um, he's often cited as being, in uh, quotes, the happiest person in the world. And this is based on a study that was done by the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Wisconsin Madison. Um, I think it was a long study. One thing I said read that, and then I couldn't find that source again. I don't know. I think it said something like 12 years, but I may have that wrong. Um he he, of course, being a humble wise person, has discounted that and said that's absurd. Of course I'm not. But uh he he may be he may be. He's also a translator and a, a, I would say, companion of the His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So, um, and you can find TED Talks and many books, wonderful books uh, on happiness and other topics that he's written. And uh, yeah, th this quote, I don't it really struck a chord with me and I've been reflecting on it and and um hopefully there's something here that's helpful for you. So it uh it begins with uh with this part of the sentence uh it's part of this sentence which is part of the paragraph. He says if we lack inner freedom and already I'm like yeah, <laughs> definitely. Sometimes I lack inner freedom. Sometimes I f feel and experience a sense of inner freedom. Absolutely. Or we, we wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be on this path. And we're all here on this path um, because we know this is possible to experience inner freedom. And for some beings, um, it maybe is a well, it definitely is more accessible and more constant and uh, state. But I certainly relate to the if in that. If we lack inner freedom, because at times we maybe do, goes on. Any intense sensory experience, any intense sensory experience can generate strong attachments that entangle us. And what struck me there was, of course, I know entanglement and attachments, but what struck me was the intense sensory experience. And I was like, oh, is that the correlation there of entanglement? Of course, I get entangled and attached sometimes with subtle things, but it's pretty subtle I was so I was been reflecting looking back at like when have I been entangled when have I been triggered and activated and clinging wanting and not wanting etc and what was there an intense sensory experience just before that or preceding that or in those moments it's really an interesting thing to check out. I'd, I'd love to know um, your experience with that. Yeah, so uh, I was trying to recall times when I've been, I'll just say triggered or what he says entangled. Um, yeah, triggered is a, a word that's often not being used now. So I have to be mindful of that. 
as that word can be uh, entangling. So, hmm. And I, I was trying to recall what what was what what was the hook, and and then as soon as I was able to just see, oh, it was just an intense sensory experience. It was liberating, freeing, un, un you know, detangling, <laughs> to just see, oh yeah, that was just an intense sensory experience of maybe something beautiful or lovely that I wanted to keep some desire that came to a sense door uh, or some pleasant experience that became a desire or some aversion, um, something unpleasant that uh, it was a created aversion. And so it's important to recall in this statement when he talks about an intense sensory experience, that in the Dharma, there are six sense doors. We may be uh, most often familiar and um, are spoken about the, our five sense doors, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, touch, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, touch, five. And in the Dharma, the sixth sense door is the mind. The mind is also considered a sense door because when you reflect in this way, what was the intense sensory experience before that entanglement? <laughs> for me, and maybe for you, very often it's some mind activity, some some mind sense door where a memory comes or a association or a, well, you can it, it can get a bit over analytical if you think about it too much, but I was thinking about you know somebody says something, you could say that's just the hearing sense door, but the entanglement maybe comes, when it meets the mind and what the mind does with that. Yeah, so just to re recall that the mind is part of this um, intense sensory experience. So again, this first part, he says, if we lack inner freedom, meaning in the times when we're lacking inner freedom, any intense sensory experience can generate strong attachments that entangle us. Of course, we may know that with the Four Noble Truths, um, it's attachment that creates dukkha, creates suffering. It's clinging to how we want things to be and how we don't want things to be. Who we want to be and who we want people to think we are, all these attachments clinging. Um, And, and so what creates, you know, the opposite of that, then inner freedom. So he's saying, when we lack inner freedom, well, we've all had times where we do experience inner freedom, equanimity, uh, the ability to be with intensity without it becoming entangling, to be with aversion and desire and strong experiences, strong sense experiences without being entangled. And so also to reflect on, oh, what creates that inner freedom? How does that come about? How is that known? Can I recall that that's possible for me? And one of the ways we can generate this is by just having dropping in this thought, this memory, oh, that was just an intense sensory experience. Hmm. It it's uh it's it can unhook us. So then he goes on to talk more about the on the other hand, you know, when we're not entangled. He says, on the other hand, 
if we know how to perfectly maintain our inner freedom, we can experience all sensations within the pristine simplicity of the present moment. That's so lovely. We can experience all sensations within the pristine, meaning the perfect, the clear, the uh, pristine, yeah, perfect, clear, pristine simplicity of the present moment. You see, the, all the complexity, the intensity can be known in, in this present moment sphere that is actually simple. It's just that aware, awake, knowing of, oh, that's intense, <laughs> or that's unpleasant. I often say that to myself, maybe daily, hmm, unpleasant. <laughs> and just naming it as unpleasant really releases a lot of it. So he says, again, on the other hand, if we know how to perfectly maintain our inner freedom, we can experience all sensations within this pristine simplicity of the present moment in a state of well-being that is free from grasping and expectation. It's just, there's just so, it's like two sentences. There's just so much in there that's so rich. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, getting a lot out of it myself. Um, so state of well-being that is free, you know, the, this, uh, we hear these words that can be lofty, uh, liberation and freedom from suffering, nibbana, nirvana, uh, uh, awakening, um, that feel maybe unattainable for some of us. <laughs> um, and yet, we have all known and we can all know um, the present moment that is free. There's freedom there. That's liberation. That is unhooking from the creation of suffering. So we we can all know that liberation, that freedom that is free from grasping and expectation, just knowing, oh, it's like this right now. Mm, this sound, this sensation, this taste, smell, sight, thought can just be known. Um, and then we are directly knowing and experiencing inner freedom. This is possible for us. We have all experienced it. And we can cultivate it. So you might take some time to reflect on when have you been entangled? Maybe something recent that you can recall. And think what was what was really happening there before the entanglement became a story? Mm. Was there an intense sensory experience? A thought, a sensation, sound. Hmm. And what would it feel like to just drop in the thought into that moment? Oh, this is an intense sensory experience. Just being known in present moment or even in reflection now as we're reflecting. Hmm. Does it does it unhook a little bit, unentangle? Unentangle, yes, that's right. Hmm. Yeah, so um, I'll put the, his full quote underneath this, this YouTube recording. 
And uh, if anyone's here on the Zoom and not accessing that YouTube recording, um, they're they're all there on the True North Insight uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> Just noticing the voice coming in. The, the please subscribe and click like, and that helps our algorithm. <laughs> also, not necessary. Um, so they're all there. Uh, but if you're not able to find it, you can yeah, email me, those of you who um, are on the Zoom call here, and I'll send you that. So uh, we will bring this into our, our practice of recognizing what inner freedom is actually here in the present moment. And uh, because it's so easy to recognize entanglement, <laughs> it's a very painful, hot mess of story and uh, experience that we can recognize pretty quickly. And uh, it takes a practice, cultivation, community, dharma to really recognize, oh, there's also ease here. Just being known and um, and and then from that ground of the pristine simplicity of the present moment, when we're familiar with that, we can more easily recognize, ah, intensity, ah, strong attachment, ah, entanglement. We can recognize it sooner and hopefully be more skillful in our responding rather than reacting. Hmm. And then we might become one of the happiest people in the world. <laughs> Possible. So let's practice. Uh, adjust anything you need in your space to be comfortable, awake. Um, so if you, uh, you can recline, you could stand, you could sit. Walking meditation is another posture. Um, hmm. These are, of course, practices of awakening and include kindness so we begin with kindness to our body our whole being as we set up our posture and we want to include in that um, some energy depending on the time of day and how your how your day is and how your body is uh it, it might require uh, some uplift in your posture, or if you're reclining, to maybe raise your forearm so that we can bring some energy. And as you're settling into your posture, see if you need any other movements or looking around your space, creating a sense of safety and presence as much as possible. When you're ready, begin to rest in some sense of inner stillness. And outer stillness, if you're um, not in walking practice, but one of the other postures, letting go of other distractions and busyness. So we can cultivate this pristine simplicity. Is it helpful for you to close your eyes or have your eyes resting down?
Invite the hands into a posture of relinquishing or letting go, relaxing. And then just taking time to meet your, your being in this present moment. Feeling into the head, the face, noticing if there's any tension here that isn't needed, that could soften. As the face relaxes, inviting that down through the neck and throat as the shoulders rest. The weight of the shoulder bones and arm bones. Helping to rest the shoulders down, all the way down into relaxed hands. And feeling into the area of the torso, the chest, the back, belly. Is there any holding or tension here that could soften? Dropping the inner belly into the present moment. Instead of holding ourselves in and up and away. Feeling the weight of the pelvis and the sitting bones. All the way down the legs. Grounded feet, feeling contact with the support that you're on. And tonight we'll just rest in this open field of mindfulness of body. As if there's a sphere of awareness, which there is, around the whole body. Through the whole body that just knows body here now. You don't need to feel everything at once or anything in particular, just really simple mindfulness of body. We'll have a few minutes of silence together, practicing, just meeting ourselves, present moment, in this pristine simplicity of body.
And in the silence and stillness, you may be able to know the arising of perhaps sounds, smells, tastes, sights, sensations. Thoughts. Without needing to pick anything up or push anything away, we can experience all these sensations within the pristine simplicity of the present moment. Recognize for yourself what does it feel like to be free from grasping an expectation. We may be conditioned that it feels boring or feels uncomfortable or feels restless? And is it helpful to just name it as free? And at times in the stillness and silence, we might notice more intense sensory experiences arising in the mind, in the body, any of the other sense doors. Let's see if we can notice is it generating strong attachments or entanglement? And is it helpful to just drop in, ah, that's intense, intense sensory experiences here in this moment. And equanimity is just knowing this is arising, this is passing.
If you feel you've become caught in attachment or thinking, grasping, entanglement, just know that, name it for yourself, recognize it. And when you're ready, gently return to mindfulness of the body. Grounded, present, simple. Allow yourself to become habituated and familiar with inner freedom. Equanimity that is grounded and wide, tall like a mountain, wide. That can know all the storms coming and going. without losing center.
These last few minutes of practice can often be the most fruitful as the hindrances start to be known, restlessness, boredom, sleepiness, desire, aversion, doubt. So allow yourself to stay mindful of body, cultivating inner freedom. If we lack inner freedom, any intense sensory experience can generate strong attachments that entangle us. On the other hand, if we know how to perfectly maintain our inner freedom, We can experience all sensations within the pristine simplicity of the present moment in a state of well-being that is free from grasping and expectation. Thank you for your presence and your practice and your intentions to cultivate true happiness. Hmm. 
Thank you for joining us.